All right, class, this is part two of the polynomial video. I'm going to talk about combining like terms first. Combining like terms. So when we're talking about combining like terms, we're talking about adding or subtracting um, terms in a polynomial. So let me just give us some examples here. Let's say we have a negative 4 x cubed plus 6x cubed. Okay, and I'm asking you to simplify. Now what are the rules to be able to combine these terms? Well, uh, in order to combine the terms, they have to have all the factors the same as far as the variable part of it. And what I mean by that is this. The variable part of this is x cubed of this first term. The variable part of this is x cubed. The numbers in front of variables are called coefficients. We should know that by now, but if you don't, there it is. So the negative 4 and the 6 are called coefficients. So in order to combine like terms, whatever the things that I wrote in the boxes here, or uh, uh, put a box around, if they're the same things, and everything's got to be the same, then we can combine the terms. And an analogy I guess you could use is, if you think of these four, these coefficients, these numbers as people, just have a good imagination here, uh, if they have the same, I call them backpacks, if this backpack, which is x cubed, if, so if negative four is a person, they have this backpack on, it's x cubed. We can combine all the people that have the same backpacks. So six, if you notice, has the same backpack also x cubed. Everything in the box has to be identical in order to combine them. So this example would be negative 4 plus 6. The rule is you add the coefficients together, negative 4 plus 6 is 2, and you keep the same backpack. So the combined like terms would be 2x cubed. Okay, let's try another one. I'm going to try to explain uh, combining like terms in a different way on this problem. If you don't like the backpack analogy and you like something more concrete mathematically, this should make sense as well. All right, so here's a polynomial, and I want to combine like terms. Uh, before we go any further, though, by the way, if, if you see a polynomial and there's no coefficient in front of it, you can always put a 1 there. There's always a 1 there. We don't write it um, just because it's assumed. However, if it visually helps you, go ahead and write it there. All right, remember we did greatest common factors. If you look at this term, this term, and this term, they all have a greatest common factor, right, of x to the sixth. So we pull that out front. In this uh, term, we still have a 9 left over. In this term, we have the minus 14, and in this term, we have the 1. So here's another way you can justify why combining like terms work. Essentially, um, you're pulling out the greatest common factor. And we could have done the same thing up here with the x cubes. And if you do what's in parentheses first, you'll get negative 5 plus 1, which is negative 4. Okay, so we get negative 4x to the 6. Okay, so another way to justify why we can combine like terms is you could always factor out the variable part of it, and the numbers left over we can combine and simplify. Okay. Uh, I personally like the backpack analogy, uh, so let me just do a couple more of these. So let's say I had 7x plus 6x squared. All right, the question is, can I combine these two terms? The answer is no, because they are not like backpacks. 7's backpack is x, 6 backpack is x squared. 6 paid a little bit more money for that too up there. So if I ask you to simplify this, it's already simplified the, as far as it can go. That would be your answer. All right, what if we had uh, 12x squared plus 5x plus, uh, let's say, 4x squared? Okay, take a look at this one quick and decide which two out of the three we can combine. Now, if you said that, the 4x squared and the 12x squared have the same backpack, you are right. 
we can combine those two, that would be 16x squared. So you add the coefficients, keep the same backpack, but the 5x isn't as cool, so you gotta leave it separate. So the simplified version of that polynomial would be this. If we, just to go back to the last video, this would be a binomial, this answer here, and it would be a second degree polynomial, which if you remember would be a quadratic. So if you would graph this, you would get a parabola, a smiley face. Okay, so that's combining like terms. Really quickly, I want to talk about um, evaluating a polynomial. So you'll see problems like this where they're going to give you a polynomial. Like, for example, 3x to the fourth uh, plus 5x cubed plus, or let's go minus 4x minus 4. So here's a polynomial, and they're going to say evaluate this uh, when x equals 3. Okay, so it's not very difficult, um, but you just got to be careful with your exponents when you simplify it. So what this is saying is wherever I see an x in the polynomial, I'm going to substitute a 3 in there, and we're going to see what we get when we evaluate. So I'm going to take 3 times this 3 to the 4th power plus 5 times 3 cubed minus 4 times 3, minus 4. And I apologize for the blurriness there. Let's see if I can get that to zoom in a little bit. There we go. Focused a little better there. All right, so this just comes down to your order of operations. So we do exponents first, right? There's no parentheses that we got to worry about as, as far as operations inside. So 3 to the fourth power, okay, it would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 which is 81 times that 3 plus 5 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 and I'm going kind of fast here because I know you all have the ability to pause if you have to alright so that becomes 243 plus 135 minus 16 I'll just combine those right away uh, which will equal uh, 362 if we add all that up together. Okay, so some of your problems will ask you to evaluate a polynomial for certain numbers for x, and that's really essentially all you need to do. Okay, um, and again, if you need to look at some examples, there are some more in your textbook. And then finally, um, we're going to add polynomials together. So let's start with an example. And you can do this vertically like we did with the elimination method when we did systems of equations. And I think that's where we'll start. Um, we're going to add 6x cubed minus 4x squared uh, plus 3. And what I mean by vertically is we're going to put them on top of each other. We're going to negative 2x cubed. And what you want to do is make sure all the terms with the same exponent are lined up. Um, plus 7x squared uh, minus 5. All right. And essentially, we're just going to add down, combine like terms. 6x cubed plus negative 2x cubed is 4x cubed. Negative 4 plus 7. Last time I checked, it was positive 3x squared. And then 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. So when you add those two polynomials, you will get that sum. Okay? Not too difficult. Um, you could also do this horizontally. And all that means is you're going to write it horizontally. So 6x cubed, I'm going to do the same problem. 4x squared plus 3. And then you're going to add the second polynomial. 4x cubed, I'm sorry, I was looking at the answer, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to do this one. Uh, minus 2x cubed, and I'm not going to have enough room, I apologize. Plus 7x squared, 
Oop, maybe I will. Minus 5. Okay, so we had 6x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3. And because of my mistake here, I... So bot bottom line is you got to combine like terms. So one, one technique I like to use is put the sh same shape around like terms. So I'll put a box around there. I notice I have a cube term over here. In any shape with this, any uh, term with the same shape, you're going to add them together. So 6 take away 2, we're going to get the 4. X cubed there. Uh, I'll put a triangle around the squared terms. I have two of those. So 7x squared minus 4x squared is the 3x squared. And then the constants, why don't I put, uh, I don't know, a diamond. Now, if you understand the concept, you don't have to do this, but it does sometimes help. So 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. That one was a little sloppy. I apologize for that. Um, the tricky part is when you try to subtract polynomials, so you got to be careful. So let's talk about subtracting next. Uh, let me find it. So let's look at subtracting polynomials. Oi. I'm struggling today. Sorry about that. Alright. Subtracting polynomials. So, example. Maybe I can do a better job with my example here. Example would be 5x squared, 5, excuse me, 5x minus 2 minus the quantity of 3x minus 8. Alright. So we're going to subtract these two polynomials. So this would be my first polynomial minus the second one. If you're going to do this horizontally, watch what I do. This negative sign here, be careful. This negative sign in this parentheses on the second polynomial is very important. Because essentially what you're going to do is distribute the negative sign through the parentheses. Because remember, technically there's a negative 1 there. And you're going to distribute the negative 1 through so subtraction by definition is adding the opposite. Okay, so what we got to do here is the first polynomial, you can just drop your parentheses, you're all good. But here we're going dis to distribute this negative sign. So what used to be positive 3x is now negative 3x. And if I distribute the negative through there, negative 1 times negative 8 is positive 8. So essentially, you're adding the opposite of everything in the second polynomial. All right, combine like terms. Let's just do this in our head. 5x minus 3x is 2x. Okay, and then negative 2 plus 8 is 6. So just be careful. Now, if you're going to do that same problem vertically, I think vertically might be a little easier just for the understanding of the negative. So what you do is stack the terms on top of each other like before. But you put a big subtraction sign out here, like so, and we subtract down. So 5x minus 3x will give us this 2x again. But here's where you got to be careful. Negative 2 minus, always refer back out here, a negative 8. Well, we all know that a double negative changes to addition. And that's where we get our 6, which matches up. So this is 2x plus 6 as well. Um, let's say you were doing subtracting something vertically. Uh, I'm going to just pick an example here. What if I had 14y squared plus y minus uh, 6, and I'm going to subtract that from Let's just say uh, 3y plus 4. Notice, you always want the same uh, exponents lined up. So I have my linear terms lined up to the first power. Notice I didn't have any squared term down here. What you do then is put a placeholder. You put 0y squared in that situation. All right, that allows us to, to still subtract like terms. So it would be 14 minus 0 is 14y squared. 
1y minus 3y is negative 2y, and negative 6 minus 4, negative 10. Okay, so the point here is you might have to put placeholders. If we had a square, let's say we had, I had this, I'm changing the problem now. Let's say we, this was 10y squared, and I didn't have any, ter any y term. It was 10y squared plus 4. Well, then you would put a 0y there. Okay, just for sake of argument. Okay? I will do more examples in class, but I just wanted to in introduce some of these topics. We'll see you.